So something I have noticed though, is um, I do want to work more on my low register. Particularly, I'm just noticing my armature looks a little weird when I get down into the low register. So I still don't know if I, it needs to be fixed or not. So I was hoping to get you guys' thoughts on it today. I've sort of racked my brain over this last weekend and I don't really know what to do with it. So I'm asking you guys, I am tapping into the hive mind. <laughs> every time it happens. I don't really know why I'm doing it. So I'm just gonna mull over it for like a few days, a week or so, and see why. You know, we'll figure it out. Okay. I have some theories. Let me test it out a bit more and then I'll tell you guys. You know what I was taught? I was taught to aim up. I was specifically told not to aim down into the flute. It actually does force you to support from your mouth. Yes, aim up. The main concern was that you would go flat. So this would explain why I keep falling back into smiley embouchure then. I swear this was the trending thing when I was learning the flute. Roll out, play up. I knew this was going to negatively <laughs> blow you guys' mind to know that I was actually specifically taught the exact opposite of what you guys are suggesting, which I'm noticing absolutely works. You do have to play with a lot of really low core support, which I'm not used to, and also you have to increase that support as you continue to play. So, I'm kind of working against things that I have practiced into my system for decades. We have corrected other things that I used to do for decades. So what's one more thing? Ooh, I like that sound, but I'm not used to holding my mouth that way, that low. So sad that this is being ruined by landscaping noises, but it sounds good. It feels good too. I was not actually expecting today's practicing to be this successful. Not bad for just realizing yesterday that I need to do a major change to my low notes. I think my entire life, I have always pushed the low notes from my mouth. No wonder they always sound so like forced. They didn't have that lovely, easy, velvety sound, you know? We're getting there though. It has happened quite a few times today, so I'm quite happy about that. I know, that's true. Things and techniques cannot be figured out in one day, exactly. <laughs> still like whenever I hear it not sounding that great, I can feel it now. I can feel that I'm actually angling it up. Oh. Thank you for the reminder. Drop my elbows. I'm doing what Tatiana mentioned on the clip that I posted like a couple days ago. Her professor told her to aim towards her left elbow. So if I drop my elbow, I will aim more downward. Oh, okay, okay. I just figured out another thing. Not only am I aiming upward when I get low, I'm also squeezing it so that the cavity in my mouth is actually getting smaller the lower I go. But if I keep it bigger, taller, it forces me into the frowny embouchure. Digging a little too much, right? Is that the digging is when I'm like squeezing it? All right, okay, that's it. Yeah, Nicholas is right. So the upper lip is too close to the lip to compensate in angling upwards. Yeah, because I think my lower lip is still angling upwards. Now I am actually feeling my lower lip defaulting to lip upwards, which would explain that when I try to angle downwards, my top lip comes down and squeezes everything down. I think that's what's happening. This may explain why I'm sliding to a side armature at times, 
Wow, look at all the things we're figuring out today. This is gonna take a few days to correct because I'm only just feeling it today. I can't actually fix it in the same day. That's a lot more stable. I'm actually forcing my lower lip to not continuously angle up. really good one to practice planning that type of thing. Also getting into low notes, you know, not like smashing into my lip. I need to support my high notes now. I think I've like gotten used to supporting my low notes now that my high notes now sound thin in comparison. This is pretty typical. If you fix one thing, it makes something else that kind of compared to everything else sounded okay before and now it sounds bad. <sighs> Okay, well, we got our work cut out for us. Okay. I'm gonna try. changing vowels. Oh, it's so annoying to me. Yeah, it's the back. It's constantly closing down. I can feel it now. That's exactly it. When you go to E, it drops your the back of your soft palate. And then that's when that like thin sound comes in. But if I just trust and keep it all, all the entire way through, it just comes right out. I 
think I'm dragging it back too much. I'm noticing that I'm compressing my mouth every time I do a big leap. I think I was doing that a lot before, but just never noticing it before because my sound in general was like a lot thinner than it is now. But because my sound is a lot more open now, I'm hearing all of the compression whenever it's happening. How do you guys find students for a lesson as a starter teacher? When you start giving lessons, you do need to start with a lower price because you are just starting out and you want people to understand that you are just starting out. So they'll be a lot more forgiving of you if you charge a little bit less than the current competitive rates. It starts with community. That's the thing with in-person career in music. It's all word of mouth. Like you can send as many emails as you want to like different schools and stuff like that. If they don't know you, there's a very small chance that they will trust you. You probably won't get any replies. Like when I first moved here, I emailed 17 schools, not a single reply. But where am I getting all of my students from? It's because I put myself out here on YouTube and I have created a community now. And so within this online community, because they everyone knows me already, that's why they ask me for lessons. Think about your life and think about what community you're plugged into. Heck, even if it's just your family, just tell your family that you are offering lessons now, right? Because you never know if some of their friends will randomly be like, hey, do you know a flute teacher? Or do you know a music teacher that can teach my child or that can teach me? And then they'll be like, oh yes, I do know. There's no teaching career where in a linear fashion you get more and more students. It's never like that. I would say it's more like exponential growth than it is linear growth. But even within this exponential growth, it's very, very slow in the beginning. And there are dips too. So like you might kind of think that you're actually hitting the exponential growth part of it, but then 
it'll drop. I have gone from teaching quite a bit, getting to almost the point that I'm at now, but it'll suddenly drop down and suddenly like a third of my studio for some reason has to quit. Life gets in the way. There's just life happens. It's not your fault as a teacher that students have to quit. Well, if you hurt their feelings, then yes, it is your fault. I would say 99% of the time, it's just cause like the student is in a new chapter of their life. They go off to college, they're, they've moved, they've started a new job or like family things happen, family emergencies happen. Maybe they get injured or something. So like in terms of budget, it makes no sense anymore for them to continue with lessons. Life happens. You just continue doing what you're doing. Keep putting yourself out there. This is what actually happened for me. And the more professionals that I talk to, the more teachers that I talk to, the more I realize it's the same for everyone. slightly compressing in the back of my mouth. Okay, there, that's sounding pretty good. The tongue was riding high and the back of the roof of the mouth was coming down. where I wanted to be. I think a lot of my bad habits came back after my week off. I'll keep practicing.